hey guys, so this is a type of video that I'd like to do more often moving forward, and that is providing a breakdown of some of these uh, decks that are topping at the regional level events, just so we get a more frequent update. Obviously, we want to, uh, you know, see what decks are topping at the YCS, but sometimes they don't really happen for every month or even in right now, uh, every couple months. So I definitely want to provide more frequent updates uh, so we have a better sense of the meta. And as always, definitely go check out Ivan uh, for his spreadsheets and also YGOProDeck.com, uh, which is an incredible resource to keep up with the current meta. Okay, so jumping right into the uh, January format. Uh, so we have about two weekends worth of regionals now so far post ban list. And this is what the Pyjar kind of looks like. Maybe not too surprising. Uh, basically, you know, mostly Rescue Ace and also Fire King. Also, I should make a note that this is at least among decks that are actually known. Obviously, there's going to be uh, some regional level events, uh, and especially some players where we don't actually know what they ended up playing. But YGOProDeck.com and also Ivan, they do a pretty good job of keeping up with a lot of the decks. Um, Nadium, perhaps not surprising. They didn't get hit on that ban list, and they're just kind of really showcasing how strong they are. Uh, Sprite, uh, they've also of course got uh, Starter back to 3, not like a huge change, I, it certainly helps in terms of consistency, uh, but you know, there's a lot of Sprite variants uh, and we'll kind of touch on that as well. Centurion, Kashira is still pretty strong. Branded Despia is another one I kind of want to highlight, of course uh, it's a deck that I personally play, but uh, honestly it's been topping a pretty good amount so far in this new format, even within the first couple of weeks. Labyrinth, you could argue perhaps that's a little bit disappointing in terms of uh, uh, regional representation, but who knows, maybe if we actually had all the um, top Topping deck lists available, maybe there will be more Labyrinth, uh, we never know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, keep in mind at the time of recording, of course, transaction rollback is not legal. And so once that is, you know, it's obviously going to be a lot stronger. So uh, just stay tuned for that. There's also some good amount of like Runic uh, Bestial Synchro, uh, some Tier Limits and Pearly still sticking around. And also Vanquish Soul and a bunch of decks in the other section. So now in terms of the other section, there's a lot of decks in here. So uh, Bistial, Resonator, and Chimera, there were three of those each. Uh, and so of course, I think Chimera is just kind of up on the rise uh, at this point. Of course, uh, usually they're kind of neck and neck with Branded Despia. So far, Branded Despia has definitely uh, had a lot more tops and down, but at least among that are known. Bistial, Resonator, I also recently prov provided that profile with Calvin, who topped the remote regional with this deck. Uh, pretty interesting. It's, kinda, it's like a small package. Uh, there's also like a couple decks of Unchained, of course, post Banless, Shrivara hit. Uh, you know, they're still kind of hanging around, but definitely have fallen off a lot. Uh, Hero, um, I think I made a mistake in my Rogue tier list that I posted yesterday. I believe I mentioned it was like three regional tops so far, but it was actually two. So uh, my apologies on that mistake. But you know what? Heroes, uh, as I mentioned, is pretty good as well. There's still Mikanko post, uh, Zolde Bound, Dragon Link. Uh, perhaps a little bit surprising that there were only a couple decks, but who knows? You can always uh, trust Dragons. I'm sure they'll uh, do better later. Uh, there are also a bunch of one-off decks, uh, so you have something like uh, Invoked, uh, the, which topped the uh, Utah Regional, like there's Earth Machine, which I've provided on my channel, we'll get to that a little bit. Sky Striker, I'm sure you saw it all over Twitter with like that Gores in the main deck. Uh, there was like something surprising like Volcanic, as well as uh, Speedroid, and also uh, Thunder Dragons. Now in terms of the deck play style, so... This kind of is where I need some feedback from you guys. I mean, you know, in terms of like, let's say a Manadium uh, kind of deck, like combo, that's very straightforward. Yes, okay. Control, Labyrinth, uh, Stun. I was only one of that, which was like the Runic uh, Spellbook uh, Stun deck that I featured on my channel uh, with Dave, who talked to Montreal Regionals with it. But then when it comes to mid range, it's sort of like in between, you know, there are some maybe combo aspects, some back row aspects, or just like a really grindy kind of deck. So it's something like Rescue Ace, you know, they do summon a lot, but they also have like their, you know, uh, traditional set for whatever and fire king is also a very grindy deck as well uh so those decks i decided to kind of uh classify as mid-range hopefully that was correct but definitely let me know what you think uh, even a deck like centurion i decided to also classify as mid-range just because they don't actually like summon a lot it's not like wombo combo heavy i get it it's like a one card combo deck but uh you know they don't really summon a lot and then they like calamity lock on like the opponent's turn or whatever uh so so far at least based on this categorization most of the decks are sort of mid-range in the old days when i used to do like the monthly meta analyses of the top ranked players on dueling book usually i used to do these categorizations as well and a lot of times you usually had like combo decks being the most dominant version next i also was interested in kind of like the packages that were played among these topping deck lists and you know dia belsar uh 30 of the regional topping deck lists had some form of dia belsar engine now keep in mind in terms of the denominator i restricted it to decks where like the full list was actually known what i mean by that is sometimes uh you know like whether ygoprodeck.com or let's say ivan uh they know what deck list played but they don't actually know the deck list so in that case i didn't want to include that in the denominator obviously because we don't actually know if they played let's say a horus engine or runic engine sometimes you might be able to guess they did but I didn't want to 
put guessing into the equation. So uh, again, I just only restricted to uh, decks where all uh, the entire list was on, uh, known. And of course, you still see, uh, let's say, Horus Engine, 14% uh, of the regional topping decks were playing it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you're seeing like, let's say, like uh, Resonator or like Orcus. Uh, I should also mention with Diabellstar, yes, most of the topping deck lists were Fire King and Rescues, which of course is a given they're going to play Diabellstar, which is why it's quite high. But there were other decks that were playing this too, right? Something that, let's say, like Volcanic, there was uh, Mikanko that played a Diabellstar engine. Uh, Manadium because of like let's say Jet Synchron so there were other decks that were making use of this engine which of course is quite expensive uh, Bestial as well as Runic and keep in mind some of these engines could be used on um, multiple of these uh, packages could be played in a single deck as well uh, which is actually quite co uh, common in terms of uh, Horus, Runic and Bestial at least so next, let's cover like the deck cost, or at least average deck cost. You had on the very low end of among the topping list uh, at the regional level, um, Rincess, only about eighty-five dollars USD. I kind of mentioned this briefly uh, on the rogue tier list. Like really, you know, they just uh, don't have any like let's say SP or Typhon. You don't have to play that because they're usually waterlocked. So their entire deck is like very like archetype heavy. On the higher end, <laughs> funnily enough, it was actually volcanic. To be honest though, it was like a fifty-seven card deck list. So you know, it does obviously increase the deck uh, cost because of uh, the number of cards, but it was. Also also making use of like you know the wanted engine as well as like horror stuff but you know for the most part the next most expensive one will be uh fire king and there are a lot of those at this kind of price range as well but the average price uh for these regional topping deck lists was around 650 dollars uh which is still uh pretty expensive and this is including main side and extra so now let's just also cover a few decks in terms of their deck costs as well. With Rescue Ace, you know, on the low end was like essentially $900. On the high end, 1000 on average, uh, really $950. Like really not much of a wide range there. So it is uh, quite an expensive deck. Obviously, we're about to have, you know, Bonfire and like Populous and whatever. And so it's going to get more expensive, unfortunately. So this deck in particular is uh, certainly on the high end. And same thing can be said with Fire King. That minimum uh, $257 you see there, it's actually a Tri-Brigade variant. So I was a little hesitant uh, in including that as well but I just still uh, wanted to keep that in note. Uh, of course, you know, high end was 1100, but average being 800. And of course, again, once, you know, Bonfire is legal, you know, Populous is legal and whatever that uh, Princess Link, you know, this deck is gonna get really, really expensive very fast and it's already very expensive. And of course, with Manadium, also kind of on the higher end, that's when you kind of see like that Wanted engine being played with like Jet Synchron, so it can reach like $1,000, uh, but on average, uh, just around $700 as well. So uh, this is another uh, pretty expensive one. Uh, and the last one I also wanted to highlight was actually branded Despia because you know it has a pretty good amount of regional tops as I just showed you recently. Uh, but at the same time, uh, cost-wise, it's a lot better. Uh, you know, average around three hundred sixty dollars. And keep in mind, the expensive card in branded Despia typically was actually uh, playing a couple of thrusts so that you can use um, fusion duplication. And even that is about to get reprinted. Yes, maybe it's shorted. Who knows? We'll find out soon, I guess. Uh, but even then, you know, obviously the price has uh, slashed down quite a bit uh, because of the reprint. And on top of that, you know, you have something like I guess like Quem is probably uh, the next expensive card that you would have to get, but you only need one of that in this particular list compared to something like, you know, Bestial Runic where you need like three of those. Uh, so I think this is actually a pretty solid contender choice. So next, let's just cover a few deck lists that I wanted to highlight, which I thought were really interesting. And so I'm not going to cover all, all the interesting ones. Obviously, there's a lot. You can certainly go check them out yourself. But the first one is with Earth Machine with Julian, who actually featured on my channel. So you can definitely go watch that profile if you want to learn this uh, a bit more in detail. But, you know, it was actually a pretty budget list in terms of what was played. Uh, obviously, uh, Julian did mention, you know, ideally SP, uh, something like that should be played in the extra deck, but didn't want to spend the money for it, which is totally understandable. So the fact that, you know, they can still go play something like this, this and uh, top of regional is uh, super, super impressive. So next we have Sky Striker, which of course we talked about briefly, that gore is really sticking out like a sore thumb. So I think this is really cool that I thought you can go check out Purple Haze team for the actual deck profile. Uh, but you know what, uh, Sky Striker, the core itself shouldn't be that expensive. Uh, and so, you know, there's been a lot of reprints as well. And you know, it does require a good pile to uh, play optimally, but you know what, at least uh, clearly the potential is there. Uh, and so, you know, they're gonna get some new support in the future as well. Seems like they're always gonna get support. Konami loves this deck. And so I think it's really cool that it did top, especially after Upstart coming back to three. And then we also have Dogmatica Invoke, which is a deck that I personally really love. Played it a couple of years ago. So uh, with the introduction of like the Bishal package with Regain, I think that's a really, really uh, good take on this deck. The Deer Servant with Maximus is always quite strong though, although you do have to be a little careful when, you know, there's a lot of branding going around uh, clearly uh, so far in this current format. But uh, again, this list uh, probably isn't that bad, at least in terms of the main deck core. Uh, although the extra deck always, uh, for pretty much any deck, will get pretty expensive. But I think it's uh, really cool and you can definitely go check out the deck profile and I'll have all the links down below. 
And lastly, I just want to quickly highlight Unchained as well, just because, you know, it did suffer that balance hit, and I'm just kind of highlighting that, you know, it doesn't seem like main deck wise there's really that big of a change to account for that. I mean, I guess there's like this one, particular list added like a Griffin, uh, but you know what? Even with that balance hit, yes, it's not tier one anymore, but at least there's potential for it to still top a regional, uh, just in case you were still hanging around with Unchained. Alright guys, so that was it for the regional report breakdown of the first couple of weeks of this January format. So definitely let me know uh, what you thought about this kind of video. I'd like to ideally uh, do it pretty often and keep uh, providing updates as the format evolves and just so we, we have a better sense of the meta as we uh, move on. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. A huge thanks to my patrons as always for the continued support and well, take care guys.